the beginning of Clap Praise. Clap Praise, a song that I wrote many years ago. So I'm coming on because of a lot of requests to find out what is the story behind this piece. First, thank you, thank you, thank you. So many choirs all around the world that have performed this piece, that have put it on YouTube, that have reached out to me, just thank you. I am honored, humbled, and so grateful. And I love, love, love every performance, every single performance. I'm excited to share with you the story behind it. So Clap Praise actually was first published by my company, at the time, it was called LCW Publishing, and it was in 2006. LCW, named after my parents, Lehman and Catherine White, later changed to the name of Bythax, B-Y-T-H-A-X. That's the name of my business, but that's not important. The important thing is it's been out since 06, and I wrote it a few years even before that. So let me, um, let me dial back. So how Clap Praise began was many years ago, I was artist in residence with the chaplaincy at Westmont College in Montecito, California. And as such, I used to lead the music in chapels. That was one of a couple of things that I did during my time there. One morning, I was on my way to lead worship music in the chapel. And I said, I, this is the, just the truth. I, I prayed and I said, God, I need a song really quickly. Something that'll be lively and just a little different. And as I'm driving, I was just thinking, clap your hands, all you people. And then I thought, I will just, as I'm playing it, I will clap. So I'll show you what I did. So I basically said, so imagine I'm in the chapel, right? I'm leading oh, like about 1200 students. And I said, okay, you guys, this is a call and response. I'm going to sing a line and clap a rhythm and you imitate and do the same thing. So I said, clap your hands, oh ye people, hands, oh ye people. So immediately they would go right into the repeat and do whatever I did. Uh, Shout them to God with the voice of tri and triumph and then they would sing it, right? This makes more sense if you know the actual piece. And then I do another, phrase uh clap your hands oh you people and they say clap your hands oh you people right so <clears throat> as they would repeat it i would still be playing but my point is they had to listen uh these are college students and so i also wanted to wake them up because chapel was early in the morning so they were like ah oh. and and it was just kind of a fun thing i would do and then i made up uh did i have a verse then i don't think i even had the verse then um, and, and when I get to the shout unto God, and I would just say shout and they go, ah, and then I go back to clap your hands, oh, ye people, right? These various rhythms, very uh, completely improvised in terms of what rhythms I would do when. Well, fast forward. Now that was in, oh goodness, I can't remember the date. Um, but anyway, let's just say I was still in graduate school at UC Santa Barbara and I finished in 98, so this had to be, oh, okay, let's just say in the 90s, it was in the 90s. Anyway, so years later, when I graduated from, uh, with my doctorate in music composition, and that's just information, neither here nor there, I had moved back home to Washington, D.C. after that, and then was called to move back to California, and this time in the city of Inglewood to be on staff at Faithful Central Bible Church, which is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful ministry. And I was leading a choir that I was the founding director of, and that's what 
uh, Bishop Kenneth Ulmer, my pastor. That's what he brought me back to ask me to do, you know, to, to, would you start this choir? That's what the position was. Anyway, so this great choir, Sacred Praise Chorale, is the choir that I was conducting and playing for, or, or leading, I should say, when I composed the, the this version of Clap Praise. And what I did, I was on a plane and I was and always in the back of my mind, I was thinking, I want to take this notion of this song, because I didn't do it a whole lot, just as that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, soloist and congregation song. I didn't perform that a whole lot all over. I had just done it a little bit, but I wanted to expand this and I wanted to uh, systematically create this uh, work, this choral work. Can I tell you something funny? All right. If you're into stories, you just have to you know, indulge me for a minute. Sidebar, years, years. I mean, probably when I was, was it, no, it would, it would have been after high school, but probably when I was an undergrad. So this would be <gasps> like in the late eighties, maybe I wrote, I actually completely forgot about this until I was going through our, our basement of our, our family home back in Washington, D.C., which is my hometown. Mm -hmm. Always a proud Washingtonian. Anyway, um, I was going through stuff and found this score, and I, I can't even remember what I called it, but it was this cacophony of clapping. The same concept had been brewing in my heart and mind and soul and spirit for many years. That piece was not good. I mean, it's okay for what I was trying to do, but it just, it, it needed to be in a box just as a, oh, okay. <laughs> An idea that had not yet met its time. So, okay, fast forward. So I'm on a plane and I don't really remember what precipitated this, but it just came to me. And what came to me was the section, the, the most exciting section of the song, the, the claps. These patterns, these three patterns, pattern A, so that's pattern A, right? Okay, that's pattern A. And then pattern B, one, two, ready, if you know what? Uh huh. Ready? And then the upbeat right here. Ta, ta, da, ta, da, ta. Okay. Pattern C is one, two. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay. Now, so those three patterns I wrote out on a napkin on the plane. The little napkins that they give you when they um, serve you drinks, you know, serve you a beverage. I was like, okay, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it. And I put that in my bag and the piece blossomed from there. So again, I already had that first part. Clap your hands, all you people. I just decided to be systematic about it. So we start off, clap your hands, all you people. Right, one clap. And then second time, clap your hands, all you people your hands oh ye people so just in case you don't fully know the piece there it this is how it begins what i was just singing so the call and response is a tool that is based from it comes out of the west african heritage musical heritage which was passed on to african american music and we find it in so many different styles of music but it's um, either a soloist and then congregation or soloist and choir, or sometimes even an instrument and, or, or, or a vocalist answered by an instrument or vice versa. Anyway, in this context, it's soloist and choir. So the soloist says a phrase and the piano punctuates the accents. So the solo says, clap your hands, oh ye people. All right, that's the accent that then the choir will not just sing like the soloist sang, but the choir will sing and 
accent with the clap that they would have just heard, the same rhythm that they just heard in the piano. So one tidbit for conductors, as you're teaching it and choir members and pianists for everybody, uh, is to listen for the accents. So for pianists, when you are playing, make sure that you really do accent those um, those particular chords. When you hear, because that is the way for the choir to remember what claps are coming next. I had uh, someone say once, well, you we can't publish this piece because it's too many, you know, people have to read and they have to hold the score and they can't clap and all that. I'm like, well, you gotta do it by heart. Now, just it just be aware of what I just said. It's easier to do it by heart if you break it down. Break it down thinking of chunks. So you've got that first section where there's one clap, two claps, and three claps. So that's that third one. Ta ta ta. Clap your hands, oh ye people. Um, I have all sorts of ways that I've learned to, as I've taught it so many times uh, across the globe and helping choirs of various, various levels, dance choirs, young choirs, choirs of, of people who are seasoned singers, who 60 plus, um, children, you know, just there, there are ways to, to teach this that make it easier. Um, and that's, it would be too long of a video. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. In the middle, after one clap, two claps, three claps, and then back to two, then we have the solo. For the Lord most high is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. He subdued the peoples under us and nations under our feet. Yeah. One thing that I, um, some people miss. That is a B flat. How about I'm gonna just make sure it wasn't um, that I didn't miss that when I was proofing the score, but make sure it, I wrote it out to sound like it's improvised. But do so don't be metric in terms of making it sound mechanical, but don't feel like you have to flub it and just sing any old thing, okay? So it's written in, yes, there it is. It's a B flat. So it's yeah, not ah. Mm -mm. That's pretty, but no, that's not right. Ah. Oh. And, and you know, you can, I don't, I really don't mind if it, there is a little bit of ad -lib. So I said, yeah. When I sing it, I go, oh, 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 oh. clap your hands, oh, you people. Okay. All right. So then we go to the next section, right? That one is five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and then we have, we've got, uh, uh, so I'm fast forwarding again because I can't say go through every single part of it. All right. Um, you know, one thing I forgot, the shouts. Shout unto God. Shout. I like to put the T there, shout, to be clean. That's not anything I ask necessarily as a composer. I'm just giving you my perspective as a composer. The other thing I've done in workshops when I've taught it to choirs that may not have, um, not, may not be a easily able to do this chord quickly, I'll just say, shout unto God. And they go, yeah! <laughs> so that's kind of fun. Or I'll mix it up. And maybe I'll have them to sing the shouts the first time. Shout, right? And then the second time it comes around, that's when they just shout. And, and it's a celebratory, victory, um, exciting, praise, Holler! <laughs> it just can't be. Ah. That doesn't work. <laughs> All right. So that's just another little tidbit that I do. Um, I'm going to speak to now the 
choreography. I had a most wonderful experience one year at ACDA. It was in Chicago this year. The um, amazing choir that is from Penn State, directed by my dear friend, Dr. Tony Leach, performed this piece for ACDA. So I'm, I'm grateful that it had already done well before then, never done any PR or whatever, but I mean, you know, to have something at ACDA and to have it done as beautifully as this choir did it, good grief. I was on my feet. I was just, I, I'm sure I was crying. I can't remember, but I just know I was beaming. My cheeks were hurting. I was smiling so much. So the choreography that you see that, um, all of that choreography, da, 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 that was created by the students of Penn State's choir and uh, of Dr. Tony Leach's choir. And I have that video somewhere on YouTube where they are, it's on YouTube somewhere, I should say, where at their choir rehearsal, they're doing it because I didn't have my phone at the concert and everything. I just wanted to take it in fully, but we didn't get to have a video of that. So what happens is so, what happened is so many directors saw that concert and loved it. And one director reached out to me and said, I want that choreography. I said, well, you know what? I can't claim it. It's not mine. It's the students. And they freely gave it to us. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Leach and all of your students who helped to, to create that choreography because that has been something that choirs have loved. However, I talking to a conductor recently, he said, can you please, can you please put that, you know, make, put this out, put your heart out. Okay, so here's where I am on it. You saw me at the beginning. I mean, a minute ago, and I was going, da, da, da. So it's very African. It's very, um, I don't want to say soulful because that means different things for different people. So it's, it's not ad-libbed in terms of changing claps, but the way I perceived it, again, I'm fine with however people perform it because I'm grateful. Anything I've composed that people perform, I'm grateful. When I conduct it, I tell people, I want you to just eat it up. It's like, <laughs> You know, I, I have even people like when they do da 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 high five pop da 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 da. Okay, I can't stand up right now and show you really moves. Uh, but I want to encourage you, as I have done, some conductors who've reached out to me personally, to just say, think about, just just take, just be free. Um, there are people, now of course there are limitations, lots of limitations based on where you're performing the piece, based on how old your members are and regardless of age, how limber they are. Um, also the comfort of the conductor. So for some, the beautiful um, choreography that again came from Dr. Leach's choir is really the, that works better for them. And I'm fine with that. I really am fine with that. But if you're, um, how this came about, because one conductor said, oh my gosh, I had trouble just telling this. If people just interpret it the way they interpret it, you can look at, um, I have one, uh, well, if you go on my YouTube channel, you'll, you'll see a couple. Um, I haven't done my signature performance of it yet. That is out, but I do have a couple of them. But I just want to encourage you to, if you have choir members, that have some moves that you can choreograph it even. So I am going to get up after all. So you can choreograph it where you have like my, um, my, my tenors in my choir that debuted this, that premiered it, the sacred praise chorale, the tenors used to huddle and they were just like, like they were having a jam session, right? Think of a step show. Those of you who are familiar with black Greek organizations, um, my sopranos did this thing and I had them make it up themselves. They were, and then they would get lower. I can't get too low right now because my knee, I might not be able to get back up. Uh, the altos were, 
Hey. And the other thing is you gotta, you can talk. You don't have to, but talk just like we do in the black church. Hey, amen. You know, it would be not amen, but hey. You know, just, it's very much from my African heritage as well as from my European heritage. I got both in me. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to hear from this is that I conceive of it as every clap breaking a chain, breaking a chain, anything that chains you, that has you in bondage, just break free from it. So every clap to my choir, you're breaking chains for other people. And have fun, have fun. High five a person. Oh, can I say one more thing? If you do this, um, the choreographed one that was put out um, again by Penn State's choir, just make sure the claps are really important. They're an important part of the piece because they are part of the rhythm. So if I can't, if you, if you clapping too softly, regardless of whether you do any moves or not, even if you're doing all the stuff I'm talking about, if you just stand there and clap and do no moves, I'm totally fine with it, but I need to hear the claps. I need to hear. So I tell people to just be aware of how you're uh, clapping. So, you know, there are certain claps that echo a little bit more. So be aware of that so that we can actually hear the claps. We wanna hear cha 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 We wanna hear all these great claps. And the other thing that is a nugget that I tell composers, conductors, sorry, watch the tempo. Every choir, almost, I have to think about it, but I think every choir that I have worked with on this has a tendency to speed. I have a tendency to speed as a composer, but I, in general, but that's another story. Um, so what you want to do, you might start it a little slower if they have a tendency to speed, if your choir does, but also this is a general thing. Just know in music, you've got sounds and you have silences. And when you're doing things that, uh, emphasize the upbeat, or things that are complex rhythms, like a lot of music. I start to say gospel. Let me clarify. This is not a gospel piece. Okay. This is not a gospel. It has elements that are akin to gospel music, but it is not a gospel piece. And th that's no, nothing. I do write gospel music as well, but this is not that. Okay. It's different. And you can contact me and I can explain to you why that is. But a lot of it has to do with the it's too long, um, but it's not a fully improvised piece. And there are things that four plus two is not, you know, anyway. So that's the, the actual, um, y'all know I'm a teacher. I just it gets too. So the actual meter is four, four plus two, four. You're not going to see that's not something indicative of how, what we do in gospel music typically. Okay. Hold the tempo back. So it usually starts speeding when we are in that polyphonic vamp, that that place where everybody's doing their rhythms. Oh, sidebar, feel free if you want to continue that repeat, by the way. You know, feel free to do that. Now that is an element of gospel where you do it as many times as the conductor says. Okay. Um, what I do is ta -ta -ta -ta, I just practice slowing it down in rehearsal have the choir watch you. That's one. Make sure they're watching you. Don't let them rush your tactus. But also have them listen for the rest. So it's I, well, I'm using my foot, which I don't mind when choir members clap this part, this um, that first rhythm, uh, pattern A. But if you are clapping something and you just go, <laughs> 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 
what happened? I just kept going because I wasn't hearing. You have to hear the and. Right? You have to hear the silence. It's like life, isn't it? If we don't stop and listen to the silences, we miss a part of the beauty of life. So that's all. Clap praise. I hope this helped. Feel free to put uh, your helpful hints that you have found with your choir, the challenges you have. If you have any questions, you can reach me easily, more easily at drd.org, D-R-D-E-E dot O-R-G. But thank you. Hit me up. Um, post your clap praise performances. I do workshops if you need help uh, virtually or, or whatever, or just want some advice as a, a choir director. Don't be afraid of this piece though. It's not as hard as it looks. It's all about patterns. Thank you and may you be blessed by clap praise.